Tell me about this brand that you started about two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. It's called Triathlon Niche. Yeah, it's actually like a year ago. Actually, almost exactly a year ago, right before Kona last year. Okay. No, I uh, left as editor in chief at uh, Triathlete Magazine last summer yep. because um, there were like a number of changes happening at the company. And yeah. then I was like, well, what do I want to do? Obviously, I felt at the time, and it's kind of funny because I think everyone knows the same thing. I felt at the time there was a gap in analysis and news covering triathlon. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, you know, I'll just start this newsletter and kind of see how it grows, go from there. Because um, I just felt like there was nobody really For sure. you know, covering it. Like a, now, now there's like a ton of newsletters and podcasts and, you know, there. there's a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah but the, yeah, but I mean, not everything is, is very... Um... As, as quality to it um but so uh, it's not that i really want to dig i mean get into this and and maybe you cannot talk about it but why didn't this happen within um the the, the triathlete magazine why didn't you manage to convince them to 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 have more of an online presence like you do today oh no we did um triathlete magazines uh it's just what's the word the not the mission but the um like the goal, the goal is different, right? It serves, it serves, triathlete serves the entire triathlon population of the US, which is like, I mean, it's not massive, it's 100,000 people. So obviously a lot of what you do is how to do your first triathlon, how to get in triathlon, training, workouts. Um, That's just like part, that's part of the goal and the objective. Mm -hmm. And some of that, some of what we did was cover pros, um, profiles, uh, yeah. news like that. It's just, it was just, and we did do it there. It just was less. And then um, last summer we ended the print magazine and yeah. i just that's part of why it just seemed like there was you know it was going in a different direction so yeah yeah okay so what's next for this uh for this brand of yours what what's in the pipeline for say i don't know 2024 do you have anything exciting sure um well so triathlon's pretty small overall and i think that's one of the things i've kind of come up like it's just it is a small sport and so there's mm -hmm. not a and and lots of people have kind of come up against this. Like there's not as much money as there should be in it. Yeah. Um, but women's sports overall, uh, there's a huge amount of money in that right now because like they're really, really growing. And so I think the, the direction kind of the thing we're playing with is moving into like more general women's sports and then having triathlon-ish be a sub brand, be, a, be like focused on triathlon, but yeah. have, you know, more kind of general sports too. Right, yeah. Yeah, no, it's interesting. It's true that triathlon is one of those sports I would put along with tennis and soccer that has, and again, it's a European perspective, so I'm not including the NBA in it, um, that has brought women's sports to um, more people watching it and more people being in, interested in it. Um, I think those three sports, triathlon, tennis, and soccer has, has, is, is, driving, is a driving force behind um, women's sports in, in, in general. It, it's yeah like, there's all kinds of stats i mean this is like what i like live in like i spend a lot of time in these weeds there's all kinds of stats this year with like uh women's sports and the numbers and the viewership and the investment um it's cool. i live in san francisco and it just came out that we're getting a WNBA team uh connected to the warriors so you know it's all kinds of stuff like mm. that <laughs> here you go um okay so so that leads me to my to my next question i read in in i don't know if it was the last newsletter or maybe the one before uh that you're talking about underlying economic fundamentals of long course mass participation that are changing. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Is there less triathlete today during Ironman than there were before? Yeah, I think there's a few problems. Like, obviously, again, like I tend to speak very specifically about the US and I know this is different in Europe and globally, mm -hmm. but in the US, um, yeah, it's not that the participation numbers are down, it's that they're struggling to come back at a profitable way post pandemic. Mm. Um, a lot like and I maybe this is true down in LA it's certainly true up here it's true of like all the race directors I've spoken with the costs have skyrocketed for local yep. race directors permitting has skyrocketed cities the entire business model of mass participation events running cycling triathlon is kind of based on cities subsidizing you right like free police costs paying right like pay, like helping yep. you out yep. cities are not doing that anymore yeah. Um, which, which, which makes yeah. sense, which I understand from their perspective. Yeah. I mean, they're partially like, especially like they're having a hard, like they also went through an economic shit storm in the last few years. So they're just not doing that. And so it's just, it's really, really hard to make money on a mid sized yeah. or small event. Um, and people are signing up way later, which is really hard if you are a smaller mid sized event because you don't have cash flow. There's a lot of deferrals. Iron but, Man is like a the monster, right? And Iron Man's still struggling with this too on like a larger scale. Like that's why they, 
I don't know, maybe the prices, the prices when you're an edge grouper, the prices for wrist braces have also skyrocketed. Yeah, but it's um chain links expensive now. But it's uh what's the word? It's like you're not like you know uh, what am I trying to say? Like like when you buy a hamburger at a restaurant, it's subsidized because like the government subsidizes me, right? Like the price of an Iron Man is subsidized. Like you are not paying the full cost of what it actually costs to put on that event, given if you factor in like all the road closures, all the police, all the and mm -hmm. so they okay. need a certain number of people to sign up to make money, and they're not getting that number, which is why they've had to cancel so many events. So it's a mm -hmm. problem. But that's not a very positive. No, it's not good. I mean, what's the what's the solution to this? Yeah, I mean, this is why. I mean, like, if you're just wondering, like, this is why you're seeing like all these races go away in North America and to a degree in Europe because yeah. people are trying to figure out what a new economic model is that makes sense, right? That's why you're seeing like maybe it's tying a pro race, like PTO is doing, right? Like tying a pro race to like an age group festival. Maybe like there's another. That's part of the reason you're seeing all these races in you know, like the Middle East and like countries where they're heavily funding them because it's like, well, maybe that'll help fund, you know, fund it. Like maybe like so that people are trying different things right now to see like what's going to work. Mm. Do you think that's one of the reason why Andrew Messick had to go? I don't know how to put it. Had to go, was let go, was convinced to go. He decided to leave on his own because is can we say that's kind of a failure from his side not to have, thought about this before and 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 do it better no i mean i think like look like uh i've criticized andrew like a lot over the years and um but i think actually like they had a really hard time the last three years like think about it right like think about the sheer quantity of money that they were holding liability on deferrals because again they, just to make yeah. it clear because of the covid situation because of covid yeah and right. they i mean they had to let go a ton of staff they had to shut down their office they like like they did a like it's just like, like, it's like insane that they were able to stay in business, if you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think that's necessarily on, I don't think that's like on him. I think um, it's just, that's the reality. And now I think that we're coming out of that. Like, yeah, for sure. And he'll tell you this, like, it's time for some new ideas. Like, we're going to have to do some like experimenting and like trying new things. And so I think, I don't, I have no idea whether he was forced out or not. I will just say, I'm sh I, he also talks about like, they are looking externally. They're not looking for like a triathlon person. They're looking for somebody on like a global business scale who can come with like some mm. new ideas because they know that it is an uphill from. battle. That's yeah. where he's from, right? Basketball, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, they want like some other, like maybe they want they want like a tennis exec who's like done a triathlon for her. So like I'm making that up, but you know what I mean? Like they want somebody yeah. who can really like bring a fresh like perspective. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's interesting. And I guess there are pros and cons with this, but you know, the UTMB uh, mm -hmm. general manager, he's coming from the, uh, automobile mm -hmm. uh, sports motorsports you know so there yeah, are so stuff like that yeah but cons also you know because in sure. trail running right now the, the big criticism coming up is uh they the, don't understand um, it exactly yeah exactly and when you know that it's the, the general manager is coming from like a motorsport it's it's almost laughable you know and i uh, that's that's definitely not a pro yeah i think that's going to be kind of what they're balancing over the next because okay. there's a very real possibility like you know, they have to cut more races, like the finance, right? So I think they're trying to figure out what to do with that. So. Uh, it's shocking how many races they're cutting, you know. Yeah, I, was shocked at the, I was shocked at the Canadian uh, race in Mont Tremblant, which was an iconic one, you know. Yeah, I did cut. that, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that was, to me, that, yeah, was the thing, that was that was the realization that, oh, oh okay, something is really happening. Yeah, that was bad, great. Yeah. yeah, I mean, have you been there? It was great. Yeah, and no, I've done that race, and the city, like, loved it, and the city paid, exactly. like, the city did paid everything. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It's it's a problem. Okay. So let's talk about what happened in Nice. You were down there, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Have you been to Nice before? Yeah. I keep joking. I've been like three times this year for some reason. Okay. Yeah. But my husband raised 70.3 worlds there in 2019. So okay. I um so it was really nice to have seen it four years ago and see it like see what you know changed and what's different from when they did 70.3 worlds there. Okay. Um do you think Sam Lidlow I cannot not love the guy, not because he's French, um, <laughs> especially because his little is <laughs> he hides it well, but he's really British. I know, I know. Yeah, but um, but what I like about him, and it's fun to me to watch, is that everybody's criticizing him. I mean, when I say everybody, you know, but a lot of people are bashing him. And he does nothing in, in, in 2023 except winning the words. Right. You know, and he's coming from a second second place. He almost won Kona last year. And so he's doing great. 
when it matters the most. And he's very young. I think he's very mature. He's a very intelligent guy. Um, it's hard for me not to like him. And he has a personality. He has, you know, but do you think sports wise, he can be the next Jan Frodeno? Do you think he can win? I mean, I guess, like, what do you mean by that? Like, Jan, like, the reason Jan was so great was because he was able to cover different distances. And, like, Sam's okay, not no, going to do so Olympics. What I mean by like, that, what I mean, what I mean by that is, like, one of the guys who can win several world championships. Sure. I mean, potentially, I think, um, I think, like, sure, obviously, he's good enough, right? Like, I think the question is sort of just, like, what happens, right? Like, when you've been doing, tra when you've been doing a sport at that level since you were in, like, so young, there's mm -hmm. always the question of if you're going to hit an injury or burnout point or something's going to go wrong or and like obviously his whole family's all in i don't know if you saw his younger brother's been pulled out of school to also become a pro triathlete coached yeah. by their dad and that can work really really well but it can also implode at some point and like right but you can say that about yeah. anybody like look at gustav eden you know like they were him and, and and his friend um christian they were on a trend we were like okay this game is over but guys are going to win everything for the next few years and it, it's not i mean hopefully they will come back but yeah, I mean, Gustav, obviously his mom died this year, and I think that's, like, he's struggling with that. Um, sure. But, yeah, sure, anyone when they're young. But, like I, like, I don't know if you're that familiar with, like, in the U.S., right, you have, like, the Williams, like, Tiger Woods, right? Like, his dad did this, to, like, I will make you a star from a young age. Mm -hmm. And it works, but then mm -hmm. at some point, obviously, you know, he crashes his car into a tree because he's, like, it's, a, it's too much. So it's just sort of a question, like, and you see that a lot of times with, so I don't know. I'm just saying, like, that would be the only concern with Sam is kind of, Mm -hmm. how it'll pan out in the long term okay what about kona for the girls only um there's there's been a lot of debate about it and you and you mentioned it a lot in your newsletter um you you also sounded kind of annoyed at all the discussions and why are people criti criticizing it so much so why is that why are people angry about this well i think look like it's a shitty situation where like you have to go to two different parts of the world, right? Like if you are a business or a brand, like that's a lot of money and it's rough. And if you are one of the people who like both, you know, both significant others are in different races, like that's, a, it's an issue, right? Like I get yeah. that. Yeah. But I guess I think what I was saying, like I'm kind of tired of arguing about it is that like, it was the only solution. Everyone keeps, no one has offered another solution to the fact that the women need their own race. They need their own day. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is 2024 three like that's how professional sports work right like we don't i was talking to chelsea sadar yesterday and she's like men don't play on the court in the middle of the women's u.s open like that's not a thing right like no they but get their own second. day they wait, get wait, their wait, own wait. event yeah but you're talking about the tennis for example or, yeah i was just like we can yeah. talk about the world cup it's kind of all happening in the same time and sure so that's so location. what i was so i was saying so basically i what i'm saying is that like i thought we had concluded that like the women need their own race and their own day and i would love for that to be in the same location right like i'm saying like yes it sucks they're in different locations i would love for like the women to be one day the men to be another day i would love for them to be in the same like general speed like two weeks of a week apart whatever yeah. right like i like all of us would love that yeah that was not possible this year like i think like too many people just keep being upset and saying like well i wish that would happen when it's been made very very clear that yeah. was not an option this year and so I, what I'm annoyed or what I was like getting frustrated with is like, that is not an option. Your only option is to have them in two different locations or to sac like to sacrifice the woman, right? Like that's your, and too many people just keep like yelling that they wish there was a third option. And like, there's not like that's, there's not. Yeah. So I mean, would, would sacrifice Kona um, be an option in the future you mean like but, not do because, like right like not have it in kona well and i think like, because like you rightly said it may not be sustainable and it's yes. not great for the sport and we'll see the result um in, in october and, and and the viewership on that only women's race but to have it separated like that like you're saying is it i am i understand what you're saying and i agree and of course i'm a man so you can always criticize my point of view but even even sam ledlow was saying it he was like well let's see what happens but I'm not sure it's such a great idea to have the woman so not only far away, but but like even in timing. I mean, it's like two weeks after or it's, it's, it's sure. not even close. Um, do you know, is that sustainable? 
Really? Right. I mean, again, like there was no other option this year. This is the problem, right? Like, like you can, like everyone can complain about it, but no one's offered a solution. What? So mm. like, yes, they are. I like, yes, they're very far apart. They're geographically and time-wise for sure. It would be better if they were closer together for sure. That would help like feed each other viewership. Like, do I think this is going to stay the way? Like, do I think we're going to keep it like Nice and Kona? No, like, obviously we're going to get through these. No, but like, do you obviously think they're going to disappear. Can Kona disappear? Yeah, possibly, right? Like, I think, like, there's, a, I think what a lot of people have suggested, and do I know if Iron Man's considering this? Like, I don't know. But, like, for sure, a lot of people have suggested, like, you do two days in Nice, you then you yeah. do, the next year you do two days in Australia, the next year you do two days in, like, whatever, right? Like, you move it around, and yeah. you still have a race in Kona every four years or something, right? Yeah. Like, sure. Like, is that yeah. a possibility? It's just a question at that point of, like, operational logistics. But and do you I think, think it would be just... good for the sport? Because... If I'm not mistaken, the words, the 70.3 words in Nice, there was one day the woman, one day the man. Yes. Right? Do you think it would be good for the sport to not have it in Kona anymore? Do you think we should keep Kona at some point, maybe turn it into a regular Iron Man? Right. Or- I mean, we're never going to like totally get rid- Like Kona is, you know, Kona is kind of the birth, right? And people made it very, very clear they were not ready to get rid of it this year, right? Like even the idea that we were only going to have one race there, people lost their shit this year. So like, we're not emotionally ready to do that. But do I personally think we need to grow beyond Kona? Absolutely, right? Because Kona is very limiting. Kona has a very clear size cap. Kona has economic yeah. restrictions. Kona, right? Like it's very, very... Like it can only be, it can only be so much. And, and, and I was talking to somebody and he, he phrased this really well. Like if the sport is only Kona, like people care more about that specific Island than they do about triathlon. Right. And like doing triathlon, like, so it needs, it needs to grow beyond just being that one thing Mm -hmm. that will take time, but it like has to. Yeah. 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 Do you think Nice was spectacular enough? Because I was thinking about it the other day. What do we like about Kona, especially if you live in Europe? Um, of course, it's the birth of the, mm-hmm. the, the sport, so to speak. So it's, it's medical. But what's really amazing is the landscape. You know, you swim in crystal blue water, yeah. the, 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 the lava layer, I mean, the lava fields. Uh, it, it's just, it's exotic to Europeans, you know, or even to, to most Americans. It's Hawaii. It's such an exotic destination do you think nice has the potential to to be to become as popular i know that they don't plan on keeping it right. what i'm saying is if they want to replace Kona, they will have to find locations that are they have to find iconic locations they can't like pick dallas texas or something yeah. sure yeah. like it needs to be epic um i think I mean, i'm a terrible judge of this because i live somewhere that everyone comes for vacation like i even go to hawaii and i'm like uh, it's fine um so i'm terrible about this but i yeah. mean nice was really great i think everyone agreed there were two things, right? I think everyone agreed the course was epic, epic shots, like very, very pretty, very like really fucking hard. Um, I think it was like on average, people were like an, like age groupers were like an hour slower. Like it was, it was hard. So I think it's like the course, the city is a big city, right? So it's not like you, sh- like Kona, we take over the town, right? Like yeah, there are as many triathletes as residents. Nice, it's just like one of like 17 things happening that weekend. Yeah. So that, that like, that's just always going to be true. Um. I know yeah. like Sam Laidlaw's dad was like that just that's not as special like he wants it to be like a little town that we take over like Roth um who, who? Sam Laidlaw's dad oh, was yeah. talking about this um yeah because obviously yeah like you take over Roth and it feels it feels different right it feels like a bigger yeah. deal mm-hmm. but part of me is like I don't know is that just like big fish small pond like it just mm-hmm. is what it is mm-hmm. okay okay so what's going to happen with the woman what are your prediction do you think Daniela Reef He's going to do uh, Frodeno. Like, I know, who knows, higher. right? <laughs> Daniela is so hard to predict. Like, every time you think she's done, it she is. goes and sets, like, a world course record best time or whatever. Um, yeah. And last year, I think she uh, had COVID is kind of what happened, even though she was, like, classy and didn't say that was what happened. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, I mean, Chelsea, I think, is coming around now and is definitely ready to go. And, I, you That's know, she Sparrow. definitely wants to defend. Um my money, I mean, I would also be like Cat. Cat Matthews is like okay, not happy about having missed last year. <laughs> so, um, mm-hmm. and we didn't see her last year, right? And then she's been, you know, kind of quietly doing her thing and training. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's going to be very interesting. There's so many women that have such a good story. Yeah, you know, Anne Hogg. Um, Anne Hogg, or... like she wants to win this, right? Like she That's... feels. She feels like she missed out on multiple titles because of COVID, right? Like she would have been the 
2019, 20, not this, I'm not saying she would have, but she thinks that sure. she, right. That she would have had like a three time champion by now. And um, she could have, you know, yeah. she's really good. Yeah. 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 And like, uh, I mean, Lucy is my husband's favorite because she okay. always, because she always just like kills herself. Right. Like she battles back so hard. Mm-hmm. Um, a little bit like Sam, you know, she yeah. wants to be ahead. Yeah. And then, so, and then catch her up or not. And then you have like, I mean, everyone's talking about Taylor Nib. Like, do I personally like think that, you know, it's going to be an experiment? Like, uh-huh. definitely. But you can never, you know, never. I think she's going to go like all out and then be like, oh, shit, I have a whole marathon. But, you know, she's obviously oh, very, very good. OK. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, she's never done an Ironman before. To be clear, this is going to be her first Ironman. She has Iron never Man done an Ironman before. Yes. Wow. Okay. That's why I think we're, it's going to be. And she's very much a person who's like, well, we're just going to use this as a learning experience. So. Yeah. But she's 25. She yeah. can do anything. She can do whatever. Yeah. 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 Okay. Is Lionel Sanders done? No, he's never done. Well, wait, wait. What do you mean? <laughs> like, he's never he always done. says okay, he's, he's done. Gonna, he's going to continue to make those crazy videos. He's going to yeah, go yeah. wild on 17.3. But you and I know that, you know, he's he's missing. He missed out on something if that's what he's going to do. You know, he, he, he wanted to be more a bit better and win yeah, some, sure. some serious Iron Man and even, even the words. I don't know what he's going to do. Right? I don't think Lionel knows what he's going to do. Um, so to try and predict what he's going to do would be He's crazy. not even going to do it. He, he doesn't yeah. tell. He him. doesn't know. I, last year, I actually um, I w- talked to him. Like, I actually thought he really seemed like a lot more mature last year. Um, right. And then like he had a really bad Kona and, you know, he had a kid. Like, whatever. It was like a lot of things yeah. happened. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. Who knows? I mean, we're going to miss him when he goes, right? He's, he's not. He's not going to leave soon. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sam Long. When Sam Long emerged, I was like, this is the new um, American star. It's not happening. Like, what do you mean? At a Iron Man well, level? Or like, he's just not breaking through at a world level? Yeah. 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 I mean, he did well at the PTO races this year. Like, decent, right? Like, I mean... <laughs> uh better than some people that you know went on and won okay, but i mean sure this is entertaining and we're going to talk about the pto after that but i mean i don't know maybe i'm i'm, I'm old school but what matters to me is the words whether it's 70.3 or full distance and yeah he's he's not even showing up yeah i mean he's there i mean obviously like obviously this year he had a kid so i don't really want to know you know want to speak to like you know you have a baby like things happen um mm. last year he got a bad penalty at world at 70.3 worlds um yeah i don't know i mean i don't know right like i like him i think he's growing i think he's Dude. like learning i think going to europe last year he learned like a lot of people like a lot of americans we go it's just we struggle to race in europe like time change food differences different style of racing it's a very different style mark and i like, never struggled well uh yeah, I mean, he did it first, and then he like came around. Um, it's just like it's common. It's just like like obviously some people are better at it and some aren't. Um, so I don't know. Sam learned a lot last year. We'll see, like how he kind of bounces back now. But do you think he has the potential to become one of the greatest modern Americans? Who knows? Um, obviously, Rudy is like kind of the top American right now for He's sure. He's French. I know. He always says. I mean, he lived by me in Boulder, so I can't. I, he like did the local race in Boulder, so I like. It's not that no, much. Like I, I love that guy. And I mean, in Nice, I was actually surprised. I was happy for his force, but I I was a bit disappointed because I was expecting much more on the bike. Good, good, good job on the other ones following him, you know. But he he he's he's a master of the course. He is a master of the course. Yeah, I think Magnus just like stayed in his line yes. as long as possible. So yeah, Magnus was pretty amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, Gwen Jorgensen. <laughs> what's what's going on with her is she can she still make the olympic team or is it over I mean, technically yes there's okay. one more race um do i think it's gonna that's an amazing like, story right yeah yeah so there is um so the, the u.s has one more automatic qualifying race uh in the spring okay. it hasn't been announced what it's going to be yet but it'll probably be um yokohama like one of the big wtcs early and basically you have to be a podium there and then you will auto call. So sh- could she be a podium there? Like, sure. Is it like, probably like, probably not. Right. Like probably it'll be like Katie's affairs or Taylor's fight. Mm. If she doesn't do that, it goes to selection and then like a committee picks. And I just, I don't see a committee picking her because she's the eighth American right now. And she hasn't pr- like, and I'm not like, like, obviously like, like, I'm not saying like, I'm not like trying to hate on Gwen. Right. Like, obviously she's like one of the best American women ever. Like, of I course. Know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. but there are like very specific criteria, and like the in the U.S., like you know they don't like 
we're very specific about how we have to pick our Olympic teams. Like we don't do it kind of just like arbitrary because like then that opens you up to legal of cases, course, of right? Yeah. So they have to follow these like, and the specific guidelines are about like podiums in the WTCS races, like potential to medal, like ability. And she just, you know, there's too many people ahead of her right now. So yeah. Even but she-, she could a podium, but if she gets her automatic spot, then that's that. So. She could be a good captain, though. Is that a thing? Do I don't know. That? Isn't it, isn't it a thing in, in here? No? Not, not like, uh, I don't think so. Okay. Like a moral, you know. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't, I was like, I don't think that's, I think we pick, we pick three women and one alternate is usually what we do. <laughs> so. No, but someone who doesn't race, but someone who's there to coach them. To yeah. Do, uh, I don't know if we do that. That's like. But do you think uh, that would be a good idea because of who she is and what she's done? Uh, that kind of role usually depends more on, like, how you get along with everybody. <laughs> I mean, it's political. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, um, what do you think makes PTO so successful? And when I say that, I was expecting Challenge to take over and be more present. And I think Challenge, I don't know. My feeling is it's slowly fading, and nobody really watches it. I mean, people race it, but you don't really watch it on television. But well, they don't have it on television, do they? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, but I mean, but that's also what makes a brand in 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 triathlon today, right? And that's why okay. Ironman is also staying where they are. I think it's because they manage mm-hmm. to have that live, which is very well done. Um, there's a bit of too many ads, but aside from sure. Hoka, sure. but aside from that, it's pretty well done. Do you think that's the secret? That's the recipe that PTU has applied and is doing pretty well. I mean, PTO is succeeding because they have a shit ton of money. Like, that's like one who of the big questions. Who, huh? who, who, who are they? Wh- wh- uh, there's a couple of different funders. Like, the initial funder was Moritz, Mike Moritz, um, who is, let me Google him. He's one of, like, the wealthiest people in the world. He is, like, a Welsh, uh, used to be used to be in media and then started a VC firm because he used to report on finances. Is and he American? Now, uh, he's Scott. He's Welsh. He's Scottish. He lives okay. in San Francisco now because VC a lot of. Okay. A lot of BC guys. And then, so he was the initial funder. Uh, I think it was like, te- I don't know. I, I I estimated it around 10 million the first time. Um, and then they went out for another round this past year. I think he put in again. And then oh, there was like two more funders. But they're VC firms that yeah. like want to get in the sports space. The problem is they went out for a round this last time. And this isn't like a secret, like they said. And they basically had to show that they were going to like get their costs under control, which is why they did some of the like cutting back on prize money and stuff and like didn't have the Collins Cup. The next, like, once oh. if they if they run out of money again before they're making money and they go out for another round, say in three years, like basically people are going to be like, "Hey, what's your plan?" Right? Like they're going to need to show that they're making money by the next time they go for another round. You think they're um, making money? No, they're not making money. Like, no, like that's not a secret either, right? Like they're not. Like they know. Like they're not. Their plan. They have a plan that's like gonna, you know, that's like their plan to profitability, right? Like that's what they. That's like kind of what they're they went out to funders with this year and that's like what they're hoping to do in the next three to five years but how right that's the that's the they think they're all gonna make it on broadcast deals and then some sponsor deals um and then obviously they're starting those like mass age group races next year with world try um Mm. But I, I mean, we just talked about how the economics of that are rough. It's, so yeah. but it's a great um, show. They're putting a great show. I love yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, no, it's really good. And that's why they get all the best athletes. And that's why they're able to do everything. But the big it's just I'm like nervous, basically, about what happens in five years. Mm. Or I mean, like, obvi- when I everyone says like, yeah, but Super League is the same way, except Super League has a very self-contained model. And Nobody they make a lot. No, no. But like the point is, like, everyone was like, oh, they're also going to run out of money. And they didn't, but Super League actually has a business model that like is already profitable. So there's a difference anyway. Yeah, but it's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you, I mean, it's really nice to read you. you. You, you're really good at what you do. I love it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. So, and thanks for chatting. I'm always happy to go, you know, deep in the weeds on triathlon. So. Okay. Okay. So we should do that again. Yeah. Thank you. All right. See you in Kona. Bye. Bye. Bye.